guys, we all know how essential settings are when it comes to playing the game. Without the right settings, it makes it really tough to do pretty much everything. Aiming, building, editing all feel off if your sensitivity, keybinds, and even graphical settings aren't right. So that's why today we're bringing you the ultimate PC settings guide out there. We made one of these videos for controller players for Season X, and this is the updated PC version. Now, I know at times it may get tough for finding the right sensitivity, or maybe you don't have the latest keybinds. I know it gets frustrating, but what if I told you, by simply changing a few settings, it can make a world of difference? Before we get into the video, we'd like to make a small announcement. We're adding a ton of new features to Pro Guides, which include 1. Exclusive guide videos for our Pro members every single day. 2. Pro Pass now grants access to all games, such as League of Legends, Smash Bros., CSGO, and Overwatch. More free coaching passes and points for Instapro if you are a Pro member. So head on over to Pro Guides by clicking the link in the description below. Sensitivity depends a lot on the type of player you are. For each player archetype, there's an ideal sensitivity. Sensitivity can completely change the way you aim and build. Usually, a high sensitivity fits someone with a quick and twitchy aim and building, and low sensitivity provides someone who likes more consistent aim and building. But this, of course, can differ from person to person. Just look at Mr. Savage, the dude's a legend with super high sensitivity. Okay, so before we get into sensitivity, we first need to establish how to change your sensitivity. Because in reality, there are two things to change, DPI and in-game sensitivity. DPI means dots per inch, and it's basically the sensitivity you have all the time, even outside of the game. This is important to note because they're measured very differently. Most pro players' DPIs fall around 400 to 1600 on the high end. Any more than that and it's just too much. The most common DPI is 400 for pro players, some use 800 as well. As far as in-game sensitivity, from the pro player's perspective, it falls usually from 0.50 to 0.90 for 800 DPI players, and 0.90 to 0.150 for 400 DPI. The way most people calculate sensitivity is eDPI, which is your DPI multiplied by in-game sensitivity, and that's how we'll refer to it. It's a lot more straightforward. So if you like the swift and twitchy aim that players like Mr. Savage M have, then a really high sensitivity will fit you. The average is around 0.74. Keep this in mind, it takes a while to get consistent aim on high sensitivity. He's been playing on that for a while, so he's definitely used to it by now. Expect a pretty steep learning curve there, not to mention weeks or months on Kovacs. But if you prefer consistency, clean building and aiming, low sensitivity will be the way to go. It makes it a lot harder to place builds in the wrong place accidentally. For example, Mongrel plays on really low sensitivity, only 47.2 eDPI, which is actually pretty crazy, but his aim and builds are actually really consistent. If your mouse pad isn't big though, you might actually have a hard time making a 360 flick because you need to use so much space. This contributes to the fact Mongrel has some of the best aim and is one of the snappiest players around. Now let's head over to keybinds. Keybinds are insanely important. Without good keybinds, you won't be able to build effectively. Sometimes new keybinds can make you way better really quickly. Lots of players don't know about these, so that'll give you a huge advantage. Most players are stuck on old school keybinds and aren't daring to make the switch, but now is actually the best time to switch. So, what are good keybinds anyway? Well, good keybinds allow you to hit every vital building and editing key while keeping all your fingers on the movement keys, especially the W key, which is the most important. All your movement revolves around the W key. As for small-handed guys out there, I pray for you, it's tough. Your most important finger is the middle finger since it's what you press to move forward. Your ring and index fingers are also super important because hitting A and D are actually more crucial to proper movement than you think. If you look at many pro players, they usually use their thumb, pinky, and thumb mouse buttons to build because it frees up their index and ring fingers. A and D are critical to movement, and if you use those fingers on another key bind other than the movement keys, you won't be able to move in that direction while clicking the button which it takes up. A great example is SCN Buga, the world champion. His key binds perfectly demonstrate keys that don't use up any of the fingers I mentioned. His wall, floor, stair, and cone are all on X, V, C, F, which all use mainly the thumb to press. There are, of course, players who use their ring and index fingers to select specific binds, but that isn't optimal. You also want your keybinds to feel comfortable for your fingers so that you don't mess up. So choose keybinds that are nearest to your W, A, S, D keys. 
you're going to want to play around with F and G because some people think it's hard to select. So if you're not feeling it, just try switching it to one of your build keybinds. Some other good options are C and E. If you're really a psycho, you could even try double edit keybinds. If you've never heard of it, then it's basically editing on steroids. The biggest downside is the learning curve. It takes a really long time to get as good as players like Raider464, who's actually playing on triple edit keybinds, but that's overkill. This man is playing with three different edit keybinds, and it's clearly working. Just look at this guy, truly inhuman. How can you do this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You can keep your original edit keybind as what it was before, but change the confirm edit to something else. Most people do one on their keyboard and another on their mouse so they can really get that rhythm going. Spend about a week in creative and it should start turning into muscle memory, but it'll be pretty tough. Remember, Booga doesn't even use it, so it's not something that you have to do. But if you're not looking to spend the next two weeks of your life in creative, then doing the scroll wheel edit trick might be useful for you. It's a bit of an old method, but a lot of people still aren't using it. Basically what it does is it lets you reset edits way faster by scrolling your mouse wheel twice or one hard scroll. This gives crazy versatility with edit tricks. To use it, bind both your edit, reset edit, and confirm edit to mouse wheel down. Then try resetting an edit with it. Isn't that super easy? While you're still in the keybind section, make sure toggle targeting is off. What that does is that it removes the auto lock when you aim down sight. That gets really annoying when you're trying to fight someone and get quick shots off, so that needs to be disabled. It can really mess you up. All right, now this might seem obvious, so don't laugh. You would be shocked by how many people don't know what they're missing out on. Turbo build. That just lets you hold down the build button and drag to build. We won't spend too much time on this, but we had to mention it just for all you newer players. Make sure to turn off auto pickup weapons too, because that gets really annoying when you're trying to pick up loot and you end up picking up a gray pistol over a scar. But auto sort consumables is actually a perfect thing to turn on, so you can spend less time organizing your loadout. Another crucial tip is auto open doors. Now, I can't stress this enough. How many times have you tried going for a wall edit and instead made a door? All the time. What auto open door will allow you to do is not lose any momentum while running forward. So whether or not you scuff an edit or Fortnite just messed you up, you'll be able to continue as normal. There are lots of different variations for keybind settings, but we found these to be the most optimal all around. Play around with it and figure out what works best for you. All the build keys are easily clickable, so you'll be able to build way more efficiently than before. All right, now let's head over to graphics settings. It's crazy how much tweaking your graphics settings can change your performance. So many people just aren't playing on the right settings and wondering why the game isn't running well. With Fortnite's constant updates, the game just seems to get laggier more and more. So in this section, we're going to go through the optimal settings for both visibility and performance. Starting off, let's hop into the first graphics page. Whether you like seeing high quality graphics or not, it all looks the same on low versus epic. The only small difference you'll notice is when you use anti-aliasing and shadows. The downside of having epic settings is crazy frame drops. Unless you're using an RTX 2080 Ti, then you're fine, I think. First, you're going to want to cap your FPS. I know that might seem counterintuitive, but it actually helps your frames in ways you wouldn't imagine. Even though you might be getting high FPS occasionally, not capping it will result in some substantial lag spikes that make it hard also to play. Cap it at whatever the refresh rate of your monitor is, so you get the best performance. Anything higher than that, and you're just using up resources on your GPU for no reason. As for all the graphic settings you see below, turn them all down to low except for view distance, which will let you see distant objects. Keep that at medium unless your game is still really lagging. Also, make sure to keep your 3D resolution at max, or else it'll look terrible. Some known players use far view distance, but let me remind you, view distance affects terrain, not players. Uh, yeah, don't do that. It might not look quite as good, but you'll see a drastic performance increase, so it's worth it for sure. As for brightness, it doesn't matter too much and is mostly dependent on your preference. To us, it looks best at around 75 to 85 brightness because you'll be able to see everything, but things won't get blown out. But this is also dependent on what monitor you use. Lastly, set your screen mode to full screen. You can mess around with it, but most users see much higher FPS on full screen. And turn V-Sync and Motion Blur off. Motion Blur makes everything blurry when you're moving around to mimic the effect of our eyes, but it's not recommended for competitive games. Some people have even reported performance drops, so you'll want to keep that off unless you're planning on losing track of players in a build fight. Another thing which we actually mentioned in another video is to turn off background apps. This is just so important for your FPS that it has to be reiterated. Go into your Windows desktop and search background apps in the Windows search bar. Turn that off, and if you had anything running in the background, then it should turn off. 
and you'll see some massive FPS increases. Some antivirus programs can take up upwards of 50% of your CPU, which is just insane. For more info on this, check out our guide on how to increase FPS. It's a good one. Next up, we've got something that you might not have even heard of yet. Don't you hate when you're trying to fight someone that's in the storm, but you can't see them? Well, there's actually a fix for that. It wasn't an intended mechanic, but it seems like Epic is fine with the bug. After all, it doesn't really make sense that the player in the storm has the advantage. If you head into settings and click on that little guy inside of the circle, you'll open up the accessibility settings where there'll be a setting for colorblind mode. Set that to Deuteranope and crank it to 5. This is what most pros are using. Some others use Protonope, but we recommend using this one. Hop into a game and check it out. It's crazy how much better it is. So when it comes down to settings, they can be tricky. Nobody really wants to spend all the time it takes to configure them correctly. It's really tedious and it usually doesn't work that well. So I hope this guide helps streamline that process just a little bit more. Sometimes specific settings work better for certain people than others. So make sure that you configure it to your liking. If it did help you, then consider dropping a like on this video and subscribing. And it helps us make even more videos just like this. Let us know if we missed anything or if you have any suggestions down below in the comments. Thanks so much, guys.